Oi, oh Big Mech here. Gonna learn you get something. Welcome back to the Red Ones Go Faster. I am indeed old Big Mech, and not every Big Mech is prepared for the conversion chaos that is orcs. However, this is going to be the guide to get you there. We're not gonna start off with this though. We are gonna start with the very basics, Monopoise Boys. These are the new boys from the Combat Patrol and the uh, um, Army set that came out, the Kildaka Warband. Uh, but yeah, this is when you buy the Army Patrol, this is what you get. They're really cool looking, but as you see, you get two identical of everything. So how do you fix that? Well, we're gonna go through it. So step one is to build one squad, 10 boys, exactly out of the box per the instructions. Again, they're cool poses, they do look good. When you get them done, you got one total unique squad. Now, that being said, some of them do have options, namely the knob, who can come with uh, the claw and this uh, bionic hand with the uh, pistol, or with kind of an avatar style bloody hand there and the huge chapa. They also have two different heads, although you can see they do have the same big gob, so you gotta do a little bit of conversion work. Also, the uh, the bit, bat, uh, boss pole there, the banner in the back, uh, is the same. So what it is, I chopped the skull off of this one, but we'll do some more to it. But basically, then you got two different knobs, the other one being the heavy weapons gunner. Uh, now you can either build it as a big shooter or a rocket launcher. Those of you who have watched my video on how to make an orc army for super, super cheap know that you want to build them all as rocket launches so that you can turn these guys into a tank buster squad. So uh, if you're doing that, you definitely don't want to build the big shooter as your second guy. You want to build them as the rocket launcher and keep going from there. Now your next step is going to be assemble the next squad. However, you're not going to glue this one and you're going to be able to try to convert it as best you can. Now, unfortunately, uh, these monopos are truly monopos. Even the two that have separate heads that aren't connected to everything else, the necks on the heads don't line up. So like where the jawline is in the back of the skull is completely different on the bear head and the helmeted head. Now, that being said, I, I'm pretty sure you can chop off the, uh, the peg there and do some gluing and just kind of shove them in place. You can see here, this body's got a big long neck that sticks out. And this one, the neck is more inside and then curved uh, to look to his left. So the heads are definitely gonna fit differently. So how's the war boss supposed to make these boys look different than these boys? Well, got a couple of options. First thing is spare parts. Now, if you're a good big mech, you got lots of spare parts. If you're a new big mech, that's okay. You're still gonna have lots of spare parts. The secret to this is the old school boys box that builds the boys that are not monopose because they come with enough shooters for everybody and enough choppas for everybody. So even one squad is gonna give you a bunch of spares. They also have these fun little daggers and stick bombas, uh, different armor plating pieces for the shoulders, extra heads, uh, and then some other pieces like you will get uh, a boss pole and uh, some heavy weapons right here. These are the ones from the, the multi-part boys, the, the rocket launcher, again, gonna build all rocket launches, and the big shooter. Uh, as well as, um, yeah, different heads. and Oh, yeah, these guys, the little accessories. You're going to have little pouches and uh, little cross arm things and stuff like that. And so we're going to take these pieces and use them on these guys to jazz them up. Now, first thing first is actually going to be to add pieces to the existing uh, miniature. So you can see here the, the boy that I've built. I actually already added a shoulder pad to this one because this particular sculpt actually has a really terrible shoulder joint that you can see right there uh, that actually intersects the uh, shoulder um, part of the strap and everything and it just looks awful without something on it. So simple addition, again, this is right out of the multi-piece boys box. You just slap a shoulder pad on there and already starting to look different. So adding things is definitely one option. The other option is actually taking things away. As I showed you on the banner here, uh, you could take away the, the skull on the banner to make that banner look different. You could also take away his stick bomba if you wanted to take that off. And there's a few other pieces on some of the other boys, uh, such as this one here. You can cut off the uh, bullet casings coming out of the top or trim up the, uh, 
the string of bullets coming out of the bottom. Now this is part of what I'm talking about is such a problem with these monopose boys. This is the head of one of them and you can see uh, that right here is actually a piece of his collar and on this side you have his neck. So even if you're wanting to change the head on this particular sculpt, you can see the size of the hole we have to deal with here because of it. So the only way to really do this correctly, uh, where you're not going to have this giant gap to fill, is to put the actually install the head um, and then come in after it's glued and chop it off here so that this neck join and this strap piece stay on the body and then you can put another head on it. Now this is my bits collection and frankly once you've built you know i don't know maybe about a half dozen orc kits your bits collection is going to about look like this i'm not even joking they come with so many extras uh, but there's definitely options for things you can do uh, without going so far as cutting pieces off of the models uh, if that kind of brings you trepidation so one of the uh, items i just took out here is the iron gob this is uh, going to come like from one of the knob kits. And what you can do is actually, instead of cutting the head off of this guy to change it, you can add the gob to him and thus change his whole look. Uh, and again, you could do that with all sorts of pieces. These, these little shoulder pad thingies, for example, you can just tack that on there. Now he's got double shoulder pad. Uh, some of the other ones, uh, like these guys here, they got lots of skin showing. So easy way to to make the, differentiate them from the one with lots of skin that you built stock is to put the pair of shoulder pads on them. Now he's gonna look super different compared to the other one once he's all painted up. Now this next trick gets a little bit more advanced. So what we have here is the close combat weapon in this hand and you can see he's got a pretty fun little ax chopper there. And we're gonna wanna change this. We're also however gonna wanna change one on another guy. This one here for example has a stick bomber. So you've got two options. Option one is you can cut the haft right on the top of the uh, hand, the fist right there, uh, at the top of the fingers, and then change them out at the halves. You can see sometimes the haft has uh, some detail on it, like this one has grip tape on it, so that doesn't always work. So what I actually suggest doing is cutting at the wrist. You'll notice almost every orc has a, a bracelet, a wrist guard, some piece of wrist armor on there, and that is actually a great spot to cut uh, in order to put it together. And instead of cutting on one side or the other, because as you can see, they are different thicknesses and designs and style, I actually like to cut in the middle because that helps provide even more variation. So now if I was to cut both of these in the middle, this guy would have tape on uh, the inside and then kind of the wrap on the outside. This guy would have wrap on the inside and a, a piece of tape on the outside. And it would totally change the look of both of these at the same time. Now in order to cut those hands off, if you go to use nippers, you don't want to use ones like this that have a real thick head. You want one like this with a real thin one so that when you go to clip, you've got a nice flat plane uh, on both sides of the cut, whereas this will actually pinch uh, the off side of the cut and really warp it and make it hard to use both pieces. Your other option, of course, is to use uh, an X-Acto knife or other blade. You can get saw blade styles for these that actually work a lot better for this kind of a thing. In fact, this here is my chosen hacksaw for that kind of a thing. Again, these are pretty cheap. This is Exacto brand. Uh, I believe the part number on it is 234. Comes with the whole handle and everything. And again, you can chop right on that wrist line like this if you want to take the whole hand or chop right at the haft like this. So what do you say we give one a shot? This one right here is again one of the monopose boys that I have a doublet of, so it's time to get him uh, made looking different from the other guy. And you can see this one already has the sword on him and has a certain look. Let's go ahead and take this sword off. Now if you look at this particular one, you can see he has a gloved hand. And so with the gloved hand and the fact that the haft is really close to his hand, I've got two options. I can either cut above the hilt and leave the hilt on his hand and then put a different kind of sword top on, or I can actually cut right here where the, the glove um, kind of comes together. However, I will need another gloved hand in order to fix him. Luckily for us in our spares pile, there is a gloved hand right here. So let's chop this gloved hand off, chop his hand off, put them together.
you can see the saw made quick work of that and we are ready to go with our new piece there. Bada boom, bada bing. Now you take your Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, pop it on your uh, cut there, and connect her together. And just like that, we now have two very different looking boys. Now for the slugger, you don't have to get nearly as creative. You can see there's actually a cut line right here on almost every slugger. So if you cut it there, you can actually chop the nose off of every slugger and change it. This back section here is pretty much identical between all of them, and it's a nice flat spot. So let's go ahead and do that to this as well. And just like that, you can see we've chopped off the nose of our slugger. And again, these now become interchangeable. You can chop these off of all the other sluggas and glue them together as you see fit. So I can actually take this part from one of the other Monopose boys. No. All right, we're going to continue modifying our uh, boy here. So we've changed his slug of uh, front. We've changed what choppa he is using. And now we're going to take some bits off. So you see he's got a little skull here on the side. Uh, don't necessarily like that. Don't want one like the other one has. So I'm going to go ahead and chop that off. This one is particularly easy because it's not actually part of the leg. It's part of the torso here. And it's only held on with the, uh, the string. So you can pretty much just do that and it's gone. Touch it up a little with the X-Acto knife because you don't need any of those little furs hanging on there and he just has a belt now. Easy peasy. Now this one also has this cool um, kind of crotch armor thing going on. You can see on the one here I painted, I did some freehand flames on, looks pretty cool. Um, you can chop that off if you want, chop off this bottom section and that would make that one uh, differentiate it even further. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it alone. Now one of the easy things you can do to make the heads look different on these if you don't wanna get into some major surgery cutting those off is the uh, multi-pose boys kit. There's a bunch of heads that have hair on them. Uh, and so you can always cut the hair squig off uh, right there at the top knot, glue it on the top of him and now he's gonna look like way different even though it's the same head. Like I said, one of the easiest things you can do really changes the look of the mono pose. Uh, boy, again, just check him out there uh, next door with his neighbor. And no one's going to even think to look twice at those as being the same boy. And probably about the easiest conversion there is. Now keep in mind, it's not just the multi-pose boys kit that you can get parts from. But all the other orc kits were designed to work with the mono pose boys. Like this right here is actually from the orc biker set. Uh, this just glues right onto the mono pose boy or the multi pose boy shoulder, no problem. But again, you can chop this hand off at the wrist and uh, stick it on the mono pose, and now you've got a chain. Uh, you've also got uh, this kind of funky club mace thing. You can even use like really weird stuff. Like this is from uh, the Grot set. The uh, the little minder guy. One of his weapon options is the whip, so you can throw a whip on somebody. So if you are gonna change any heads out, it's important to note that very few of these actually have a helmet, more are helmet less than helmeted. Uh, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is if the original head uh, doesn't have a helmet, such as this guy right here, you're gonna to wanna to switch it out for a head with a helmet uh, for maximum contrast to the regular one. And this one is probably the easiest one to head swap. You just leave the head off, 
uh, glue a new one down. You might trim the neck just a tad, uh, but that should actually work pretty nice just as is. So some of these when you're gonna have some gaps to fill. Uh, for example, this one here, the top of the neck there, you can see it's got a bit of a gap in it. I recommend using uh, the super glue. The Loctite Ultra Gel is actually really, really good for this. Uh, you can kind of glop it on there and it will help uh, fill in the gaps. And on this particular one, you don't want a head that's got a, a hole that's too deep, uh, like from the multi-part boys, because it actually doesn't fit very well, uh, such as the helmeted one here I was trying to go for. See how deep that is? It's actually really hard to get on there. So one of the shallower ones uh, from one of the different kits will actually work a little better uh, for this particular conversion. All right, here's our after. You can see just how different we made these boys look. We've changed the head completely. We've got a different stock there on the front of the uh, Slugo. We've got a completely different weapon. And so, yeah, he's looking good. And here we have the stick bomber guy. Again, super easy one. You can cut the stick bomber off at the haft because it just has a regular old haft. And a stick on chopper of your choice. You can see it's quite a difference on look. All right, I know the big question is, what do you do about the Shooter Boys? If you want to make all Slugga Boys, these Shooter Boys really are difficult to deal with. And I mean, they really are difficult to deal with. If you pop them off, you can see here this arm has his whole honking shoulder and left side in it. Um, and even that one, which isn't as bad, still has a huge gap. Uh, makes it really hard to convert these. So... Uh, I've messed around with it, I've messed around with it, I really don't think there is an easy way uh, to do this, a really an effective way at all. Um, my suggestion is uh, you're going to end up with uh, six shooter boys from the mono poses, and um, if you get a box, uh, just one box of the, uh, the multi-pose boys, uh, you can easily make um, four more shooter boys or, you know, three in a knob. Uh, in order to make that particular squad and I would just run a shooter boy squad uh, So what you do is you would actually put all six of these together in one squad build four uh, regular shooter boys uh, and a knob put it all together and have that squad um, You know again, that'd be another good use for uh, The uh, big shooter guy too. You could throw him in there uh, Then you only got to build three or really again two and a knob if you wanted to but that would be my suggestion as far as how to customize these these are a lot harder because of where they're they're holding. They're holding on the barrels on these, and the multi-pose boys aren't like that. It, they are separate pieces. So you can see here the barrel uh, has no hand on it, and so it's really easy on the multi-piece ones uh, to change these arms out and have completely different, um, you know, shooters on them. But these guys, with the way they're molded in, it makes it really hard. You can cut the, uh, you know, their magazines off and do different magazines. You can add different. Um, effects to them. You can do the little, you know, bullet casings coming out of the side and stuff. I like these little um, add-on sights that are in the, the kit. Uh, they're super easy to glue on, you know, to the front of the, the shooter, make it look cool. The other thing you could do is always uh, popular is a barrel extension. Uh, that's where you cut the uh, the muzzle off, and you cut the barrel off of another shooter, glue them on together, and just kind of make an extra long one. Um, there's always, you know, trying to stack them up and down or side by side, which really just, again, isn't going to happen with these. Uh, so again, what I would do is actually chop up uh, kind of what you got and mix and match them. So this was super simple. All I did was cut the, uh, the casings that were coming off uh, the top of this one. Just cut those off. So here's the one uh, with them cut off and glued them to the side of this one. So now he's going to look very different from his... Uh, counterpart and uh, so is he but we're not done yet we're gonna cut this uh, string of uh, bullets off too and just like that we've got our two different shooter boys so you can see here the one on the right is the OG out of the box the one on the left is our modified one you can see we did some subtraction so the uh, the original one here has this little, uh, I don't know, little beast snag ish thingy uh, pinched into his skin. We cut that off of this guy. We also cut off the skull on his uh, belt and then gave him a stick bomber on the new one. Uh, it's going to change that profile a bit from the side. Uh, we did some addition, right? We, we took one of the uh, shoulder armor pieces from the multi-pose boy kit, stuck it on there. 
We also completely changed up the Shooter, right? So we took off all of the, uh, the belt fed magazine there and the bullet casings coming out, replaced it with a side feed clip from, uh, the, again, the multi-pose boy kit, added on the site. So now we have two very different looking boys for our Shooter squad so they could be in the same squad together and look pretty darn good. And with that, you should be well on your way to being a big mech yourself. Again, these are all super easy changes. They are well within the purview of any hobbyist that's got a knife and some glue uh, and a little bit of orky madness inside of them. So don't be afraid of the monopose boys. Give them a shot, especially if you've got at least one box of the multipose boys to grab some parts from. Uh, you won't be hurting for options on ways to adjust them and really make them look different than their counterparts. And again, it could be uh, as simple as some part swaps changes uh, to make it look a little different. It could be uh, a little bit more substantive, right? Taking bigger parts away, changing bigger parts, adding bigger parts. It could be completely different, you know, completely changing a, a hand, a head, and a weapon. Uh, in order to get that different look. So as close or as far uh, as you want to take it, but you can definitely customize the Monopose Boys. Now, I wouldn't recommend getting more than maybe a couple of squads of these uh, to do this with because, again, they will start looking uh, a little repetitive after a while just because of the way they are uh, designed, but you can definitely get away, uh, again, with the two squads of the Combat Patrol, no problem. If you did get uh, that big army set as well and ended up with four squads of them I think you could spread them out throughout an army and still be okay But that's going to do it for part one of our converting series uh, In the, the next episode we'll look at another uh, orc kit and look at uh, converting some more uh, But eventually we'll keep working out everything you need to do that super cheap army That is a really popular uh, video here on the channel Including getting your whole tank buster squad together So again, you should have two of these guys now from the monopose uh, and we'll, we'll get to from the, uh, uh, the multi-pose as well, uh, as well as, um, or one from the multi-pose as well as one from the commandos. In fact, I think commandos might be what we end up doing next. So, uh, if you like this and you want to learn some more, stick around, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Until then, have a good wog. Oi, you called that a tank? This is a tank. <laughs>